o'clock. It was a mess. So we gonna do it at eleven o'clock service. We got eleven thirty service that we are starting right now, and God is on the move because He moved me to another time. <laughs> All right, Holy Father, I thank you for what you get ready to do. I'm gonna put God is on the move again, and we're gonna move on with this broadcast. I thank you for just tuning in right now. with this resurrection day welcome 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 to jesus delivery international ministry resurrection day service our first service it was totally a flop it was totally messed up so god want me to go into a second service and i'm going to do this because thus said the lord has me to do it so God is on the move today. Today is Resurrection Day, the most important day of Christianity's life. This is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins on the cross, and the third day he arose. So the message today is do you believe in, in the resurrection? Father God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ Yeshua. I ask you to touch my heart, my mind, and my spirit. Anything that's, that's not of you, I ask you to move it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome here to teach this message through my vocal cords. Because you know who's going to see it. Who's looking at it now because they switched on thinking that I was gone and who's going to see it later? 
I thank you, Holy Spirit, for making it possible for this message to be recorded. In Jesus' most mighty name. Amen to the Father. Amen to the Son. And amen to the Holy Ghost. Welcome, welcome, welcome. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, we talk about uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has risen him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. Now, we do that scripture because it's basically talking about the resurrection. If you believe, then you shall be saved. So, these verses believe in the resurrection, but you see in Mark, one of the four gospels and one of the twelve um Mark is one of the four gospels, the book in the Bible. And he's all, he was also one of the twelve disciples. But at this time we're talking about he was actually the eleven because Judas had already murdered himself or killed himself because of what happened. Now, and uh, so he was one of the twelve, one of the eleven at this time disciples or apostles. Verse 16 talks about Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Selim had brought sweet spices that they might have come to anoint him. You remember on the Holy Wednesday, the, the message I talked about, the woman that anointed Jesus, and that was the Wednesday before the resurrection. So I talked about how this woman anointed Jesus for his burial. And it's in Matthew 26, 13. And for reference point, I'm going to go there. In case you did not see the Holy Wednesday message, and um, you wonder, what is this apostle talking about? But in Matthew 26, uh, the woman did a little something something um, she anointed Jesus and they the apostles or disciples saying why's she doing that but uh, we're going to go to verse 10 and uh, down to 13 so when Jesus understood it this is the King James version when Jesus understood it he had he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she has worth a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. But me ye have not always. For in that she has poured this anoint, on, ornament on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever, whosoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial of her. So, Jesus was known as a prophet. And of course, this is a prophetic ministry, and a prophet of the word, the prophet spoke of things to come. So Jesus is telling the apostles here, they were saying up above there, and they said, What why is she uh they on verse seven it said, There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ornament. And poured it on his head, as he sat on the or, or he sat at meat. That means he's getting ready to eat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, "To what purpose is this waste?" So they said that the woman was wasting that precious ornament 
from the alabaster box. And they said that she can, you know, they can uh, sell that and get some money for it and give it to the poor. So Jesus was telling them, the poor are going to be with you always. But I'm not. Because Jesus knew by Friday, he's getting ready to be crucified. Uh, so the woman was getting him ready for the barrier. Now, we're going to pick up the story here uh, because in uh, Mark is where we're going to take our lesson from the day. Mark 16, 1 through 20. And uh, at this time, Jesus has already been uh, uh, crucified. And they were going... Um, Mary Magdalene, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go in here and just go ahead and read it because I got some notes one way, so I'm gonna go for my notes this time because I went another way on the last message, but I'm gonna go this way this message. So uh, Mary Magdalene and Mary and uh, James went to the uh, tomb, and what they were doing, they they had prepared some stuff for his burial. So we go in there right now in verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 1 through, um, we're going to read 1 through 20, but I'm going to stop at uh, probably around the 15th verse or so to give some little ex explanation if need to. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salem, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very large. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white long garment, and they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not afraid, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So this is the angel of the Lord sitting in there. Because Jesus had already risen. And it, the angel of the Lord was there because they knew that uh, these people were coming to uh, anoint his body. Because when they pulled him down from the cross. They just put him into that bar of tomb. And they didn't get a chance to anoint him. But see, Jesus the prophet or our Lord and Savior, he already knew that he needed to be uh, anointed. So on that Wednesday, like I said earlier, he was already anointed. He was already, the ointment was already put on him for his burial. So when they got there, he had already risen. Because he knew when they came that he would have been, he had risen. He would have been risen. <laughs> I hope I said that correctly. And so the angel was sitting there, waiting on them to come with his white garment on, letting them know that Jesus has already risen. Praise God. Now verse 7, it goes, but go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. So Jesus already told them before he left, as he was preaching and teaching to them, while he was walking around on the earth, and he, you know, taught his disciples for the three years in which he was supposed to teach them. 
And before he, he told them that he was going to die and going to rise on the third day and he'll come back and meet them. And he also, Peter said, you know, at that time before his resurrection, uh, he told Peter that the crop going to crawl three times and he's going to deny him. So that's why he said, and tell Peter, because Peter denied him three times, just like he said. And then Peter felt so bad that, you know, he felt like that he had killed him because he didn't trust God. He had little faith. And he, instead of him saying, Lord, Lord, I, I'm, I'm there for you. He denied him, just like he said. So, you know, he had already forgiven him because he knew what was going to happen. So he said, tell Peter too. Because, you know, he needs to be here to know that I have risen. Verse 8. And they went out quickly and fell from the sceptre, For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Verse 9, now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Now he appeared to this woman, and you know, it's something specific about why, he, why Mark chose this particular passage to talk about. Because Mary Magdalene, Jesus cast out devils. And at the end, you're going to learn why this particular verse or this particular passage was very important. Because of what we supposed to do as believers. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. So she went up there and told them that she just saw Jesus. And he has risen. And they, and they, it, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen, four of her believed not. So when she told them about it, she said, I just saw Jesus. He's risen. He told me to let you guys know about it. Uh, and they didn't believe her. After that, he appeared in another form. Unto two of them as they walked and went unto the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. So he came back to two more that was walking in the countryside. They went and told them about it. And they didn't believe him neither. They were like, you know, he ain't risen. Afterward, that he appeared unto the eleven. As they sat at meat and upbranded them with their unbelief and harassed hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. We talking about the risen Christ. This is resurrection day. And we are talking about Jesus Christ himself. In verse 15 through 18, Jesus told his disciples to go ye into all world and preach. So we're going to go there right now. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. That's why that passage was so important about Mary Magdalene. Because Jesus said in his name, we should cast out demons. So in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. If it's a demon in front of me. Inside a human being. A man or a woman. I cast you out in the name of Jesus the Christ. Yeshua. It's done. 
What else did he say we're going to do as believers? He said they should speak with new tongues. Just like the upper room experience. When the Holy Spirit came, they spoke in unknown tongues. So if you see a believer <coughs> speaking in unknown tongues, that's a sign. They should take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ Yeshua, as I put my hand up on this broadcast, I am laying hands on the sick. And as the word has said here, you shall recover. So you shall recover from any diseases, any illness that you have. Just touch my hand as I put my hand up. And in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, you shall recover. Amen. It's so then, verse 19, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up unto heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Hallelujah! And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, after Jesus had spoke to all of them, the eleven and all the ones that was in Galilee that were waiting for him, like he told them to wait, and he let them know that he has risen. Now, this is Mark's version. Apostle Mark or Disciple Mark, this is his version. You're going to have another version in Matthew. You're going to have another version in Luke. And you're going to have another version in John. But... This is the way when a person or people are in a group. You can have four people that saw the same thing that tell you it differently. This is the way he saw it. So Luke or Mark is telling us that in all of them saw Jesus being lifted up into the heavens. And in Acts, the book of Acts, it talks about uh, how they're watching him going up. But he said, as I go up, uh, the angels are sitting there and saying, why are you looking? He's going to come back the same way he went up. So, Jesus went up into the heavens. Right now, he is sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven, interceding for this message and for your life right now. As we celebrate him rising up as he spoke. He also said to go forth. He told the apostles, the disciples to go forth and preach everywhere the Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs following. So, me as an apostle, the preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, all over the world, the apostles, the, the uh, prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, we call that the fivefold, the ministers, the bishops, the deacons, the laymen, everybody. That's a believer of Christ. That believe in the resurrection of Christ. They have this word. As long as God is working through them. The signs and wonders will follow. Now it's time to give your life to Christ. As we started off this message in Romans 10, 9 and 10. It's time for you to repeat after me. That if thou confess with thou mouth the Lord Jesus shall and shall believe in thou heart that God risen from the dead. 
That's what this resurrection day is for. Thou shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you are saved if you believe. You need to be baptized by the Holy Ghost, baptized with water baptism. And if you have repeated that after me and you want to be baptized, get in touch with me at Apostle Jimmy at gmail.com. Jimmy is spelled J I M M I E at gmail.com. Or go to your local church. Go to the altar. Give your life to Christ. And tell the pastor you need to be baptized. With water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you need any help with that, please contact me. Father God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ Yeshua. I thank you for the second version of this message, Do You Believe in the Resurrection? For all the ones that believe, that gave their life to you on this day, I thank you. The angels of the Lord are just glorifying and praising your name because there's more people that will be saved and they will not go to the lake of fire or be damned in damnation and they will go to they will have eternal life i ask you to help the ones that have an ear to hear to understand the message that just went forward i thank you holy spirit for what you're doing to your people i adore you i praise you in jesus most mighty name amen to the father amen to the son and amen to the holy ghost Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking your time out to look at this apostle with Jesus Delivery International Ministry, online ministry, preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. I thank you for this resurrection day. I am so honored that God used us on this day. This is our first Resurrection Day service. I thank you for tuning in and God bless you. Tune in on Wednesday night from 7.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. on our new channel, which is the Prophetic Bible Study Channel. And that will start on this coming up Wednesday with a Prophetic Bible Study message. Tune in next Sunday at 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. for our next service day, uh, our next Sunday service lesson. If we have a problem with our broadcast, we will pre-record one and uplift that one. I thank you for tuning in. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.